And what I mean by that is when it comes to attracting and raising private money, it's all about having the right mindset. We're not begging, we're not chasing, we're not selling, we're not persuading, we're actually offering an opportunity. You know, the old business model of borrowing private, I mean, of borrowing money is you go to the bank and you get on your hands and knees and you beg. Well, not in this world of private money, because you see what we're doing is instead of, of asking, I've never asked anybody for money. I've never yeah. asked anybody for private money. I teach them what the program is. And then if they've got investment capital or retirement funds, they're going to want to know the details of it. So the mindset of you are actually serving people, right? There's no fear of rejection when you've got the mindset right. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. Jay Connor is a real estate investor in North Carolina. He's been investing there since 2003. He's rehabbed over 450 homes. He's averaged a profit of over $71,000 per deal, and he's completed over $52 million in real estate transactions. He's also a leading expert on private lending. Jay, welcome to the show. Hey, Sam. Thank you so much for having me come on to talk about my most favorite subject, and that's private money and private lending. I love it, Jay. You know, it's one of those things that, I, you know, obviously there's two things we need in this business. It's money and deals. And uh, without without both of those, it's hard to get things done. I look forward to diving into that topic, you know, more at length. But there's three questions I ask every guest who comes on the show. In 90 seconds or less, can you tell me where did you start? Where are you now? And how did you get there? So my wife, Carol Joy, and I started investing in real estate and single family houses. I've done commercial deals as well. I got a paid in full as a free and clear shopping center in Newport, right next door to us. But we started in 2003 investing in single family houses. The very first six years we were in the business, I relied on local banks and mortgage companies to fund our deals. That's all I knew. I thought if you needed money, you go to the bank. So I go to the bank for six years and get on my hands and knees and beg and say, Miss Banker, please fund my deal. And um, in the uh, January of 2009, I had two deals under contract, two houses under contract. I had a great relationship with the local bank for six years. And I found out very quickly, Sam, that I had lost my line of credit. I've been shut down. I didn't know there was a global financial crisis going on until now I got a crisis. And I got two deals with over $100,000 in potential profit under contract and no way to fund it. So in less than two weeks, I learned about this world of private money and private lending. And so I put my program together. I started teaching people in my own network what private money and private lending was and what my program was. In less than 90 days, I raised $2,150,000 in private money. And since that day, Sam, I've never missed out on a deal for not having the fund and not having the money. I love that. That's a great, that's a great story. And I, you know, certainly um, knock on something hard. I've not, uh, not experienced the pains of not getting a deal done because of lack of funding. I certainly have experienced the pains of getting a deal done with challenging funding. And, you know, those are, those things, I think they affect us all. And the reason that I think, Jay, and obviously, you know, that this is a a show where we focus on the commercial real estate side of things, and you focus primarily on the single family home side of things, but I think there's so many uh, parallels, I think for all of us that we can learn from you on how you structure deals, on how you find private money. Maybe for us, the deal size is bigger. Maybe there's an extra zero attached to it, but the fundamentals I believe are probably the same. So tell me this, how did you, one, how did you raise the money? And then, you know, I guess just break it down for me. Tell me, tell me what I'm missing. I don't even know the right questions to ask you, maybe. <laughs> well, first, let me start by identifying where do you find these people? And yeah. first, let me even define who a private lender is. I'm not talking institutional money. I'm not talking banks. I'm not talking, I'm not even talking hard money brokers. Now I've got a great number of friends that are hard money brokers. We're in masterminds together and um, they're great people. I say forge as many relationships as you can, but a private lender, my definition of a private lender is a human being a individual just like you or me that loans money from either their investment capital and or their retirement funds. Self-directed IRAs is a very, very important topic uh, to learn about as a real estate investor. But anyway, a, a private lender is investing in your deal 
it maybe it's in a single family house or if it's a commercial deal, they're investing in your syndicated fund. And so it's an individual you're doing business with. So the question is, where are these people and how do you find these private lenders? Well, let me break it down. Here's the, fo the following categories of where private lenders are. First category is what I call your warm market, your center of influence, people you've got some kind of connection with. With. Second category is what I call your expanded warm market. How do you expand your network, right? Because some people tell me, well, all my people are broke, Jay. My people ain't got no money. Well, first of <laughs> all, I don't believe them. But anyway, we talk about how to expand your network. And then the third category of private lenders are what we call existing private lenders. These are individuals, people like you and me, that are already loaning money out and investing with real estate investors. So let me come back to the first category, your warm market. You know a lot more people than you think you know. Your warm market includes people in your cell phone, people on your email list, people in your social media, your Facebook friends. And I don't mean your fake Facebook friends, but I mean people you actually know and have a connection with, your LinkedIn connections and et cetera. And so who do you go to church with? You know, are you involved in the Rotary Club? I can tell you, Sam, I have gotten a lot of private money by being a very active member in Business Networking International, mm. BNI. Um, and so, you know, getting involved in these in these organizations where you get to tell your story. Now, first of all, before I talk any more about the categories, and I'll come back to that in just a moment, I want to talk about owning the real estate between your ears before you actually own real estate. And what I mean by that is when it comes to attracting and raising private money, it's all about having the right mindset. We're not begging, we're not chasing, we're not selling, we're not persuading, we're actually offering an opportunity. You know, the old business model of borrowing private, I mean, of borrowing money is you go to the bank and you get on your hands and knees and you beg. Well, not in this world of private money, because you see what we're doing is instead of, of asking, I've never asked anybody for money. I've never yeah. asked anybody for private money. I teach them what the program is. And then if they've got investment capital or retirement funds, they're going to want to know the details of it. So the mindset of you are actually serving people, right? There's no fear of rejection when you've got the mindset right. And of course, the worst time in the world to be trying to raise private money is when you've got a deal because you're already desperate and you're begging. And you're not even trying to when you're like looking for money for this particular deal. I've got some good friends that say, oh, just go get the deal under contract. The money will show up. The and worst going, idea. Where? Like, where? <laughs> where's the money going? I say get the money lined up first. So anyway, back to the categories. So your warm market, you know, get involved and grow your warm market, grow your connections. I teach a lot on that because I practice it myself. But then you have those existing private lenders that love real estate. Well, when I first started raising private money, I got this idea. I said, you know what? I'm going to hire my real estate attorneys paralegal to search local public records at our local courthouse, looking for individuals' names, not companies, not LLCs, but looking for individuals on public record that are on a mortgage or a deed of trust that has secured a note that they have now loaned money out on the real estate. Well, that was a great idea, except here in my small area of only 40,000 people, we only found two individuals in 90 days. I said, there's got to be a better way. So Back in 2004, we started creating our private lender data feed. So our private lender data feed, we update every month. It's software that we have, and we update it by getting every private lender loan that's closed in the nation by zip code every month. There's over 12,000 private lending notes and mortgages that are closed every month. And we get all that contact information with the interest rates that they're accustomed to getting and et cetera. And I'll tell you one more and then and, and then I'll turn it back over to you, Sam. Where can you find these existing private lenders that love to loan money out on real estate, commercial deals, single family deals? I can tell you where. At And here's a writer downer. At self-directed IRA networking events, self-directed IRA networking events. So a self-directed IRA, I'm sure your audience knows, Sam, but just in case, a self-directed IRA company is a third-party custodian that's approved by the IRS that allows individuals to take current retirement funds 
from their 401ks or pensions or whatever and move them over to the self-directed IRA company. And now they can loan that money out and they can invest in real estate and earn tax deferred or tax-free income, depending on the type of retirement account they've got. So I said that to say this, here's an interesting statistic. 71% of account holders in self-directed IRA companies want to invest in real estate, 71% of them. So, I mean, you know, as recent as the end of last week, I got an email inviting me to a networking event on Zoom by the premier self-directed IRA company that I use and recommend. And you get to go on there on Zoom and network with existing private lenders. So that's where, those are where you can find them. Right. No, that makes that makes a heck of a lot of sense. I like that. And those, I mean, it, it, this sounds good on the front end for like, okay, hey, there's private lenders out there. They, I, for me, I struggle and, I, and I've got some I have used in the past, private money for maybe some smaller deals. But the people that I would say, you know, that we build relationships with in the commercial real estate side of things typically want to be equity investors. They want to be, they want to, they want to share in the upside. They want to see this thing go bang and go, man, this was awesome. You know, we made a ton of money on it. So who who is who is that person and why is that person wanting maybe to get a reduced return in exchange for maybe a reduced risk? Like what's what's that investor, I'm not calling investor, what's that lender profile look like for you? Well, I can tell you a lot of them. A lot of them are sick and tired of the volatility of the stock market. And particularly the older they get, they don't they don't have time to live through another cycle of the stock market or two more cycles of the stock market. And so, so there's a key, the, oh, like I've got 47 private lenders right now that are investing in our deals and lending us money on our deals. And the majority of them are over 60 years old. And the reason is number one, they got retirement funds, right? Um, I'll tell you another great category of private lenders are entrepreneurs people that are own their own businesses because they get it. They understand business. Um, but people that have been investing in the stock market, they're looking for like, you know, as you just mentioned, Sam, there's more than one way to structure a deal. Of course, you can give them an equity share percentage on the back end of the deal, particularly on a larger commercial project. In my case with single family homes, they don't get any equity share. They get a straight Right now, 8% return on their investment and um, no origination fees that I pay or anything like that. But again, who are these people? They're people that are looking for a a more, uh, of course, there's nothing that's guaranteed, but they're looking for a higher rate of return that's not coming with it some you know huge risk. I mean, in the stock market, you have no idea what's going to happen, right? And of course, you know these people when they're investing, they're really investing in you. They're investing in the operator. So, you know, <laughs> you better be confident about what you're talking about because if you're not confident in what you're talking about, they sure aren't going to be confident in believing in what you got. Right. Right. Yeah. And and I think going back to the self-directed IRA comment, I just just had this thought that debt inside of a self-directed IRA is really good because then you can skip all the UBIT. You can skip all of those potential taxes as you, that you may run into as an equity investor. I'm not saying you will because I'm not a tax attorney by any stretch. But let's go back to the terms a little bit and how you structure those. I know you said you're paying a straight eight percent. You're not paying any points up front. How does how does that work out? What's the what's the timeline? What's the how are you structuring it for your deals? Obviously, everybody else will construct it their own any way you like. But what's that look like for you? Yeah, for single family houses, the length of the note is either two years or five years. Now, I'm typically not needing to use that money for that length of time. But here's why we do it: if it's liquid investment capital that the private lender has. It's just money in their checking account or their savings account or a mutual fund. We'll do the note for two years. Typically, we're going to be, uh, it depends on our exit strategy. If it's a flip, if we're buying and selling a flip, um, we're probably going to be in in and out of it probably within nine months, depending on the scope of work. I just finished a rehab. Just the rehab was $192,000. That's out of the ordinary. Um, And if we're borrowing money from the private lenders retirement funds coming from their self-directed IRA, then we're going to structure that note for five years. The reason we do that is we still sell some homes on rent to own to where we actually help people uh, repair their credit to where they can actually get a mortgage and cash us out. 
So we'll set that up for five years. But again, typically, we're not going to use it that long. The interest rate is 8%, um, a straight 8%. And that's either, if we're doing a flip, we won't even do monthly payments unless the private lender needs the monthly income. A lot of our private lenders are older and elderly. So we let them choose as to, do you need monthly in, you know monthly payments for part of your income? So that's left up to them. The maximum loan to value that we borrow is 75% of the after repaired value. Now, I didn't say 75% of purchase. I said 75% of after repaired value. That's one of my favorite reasons for private money. I never bring any of my own money to the closing table. I always bring home a check. I mean, who wants to get paid to buy real estate, right? So I bring home a big check, but I'm not going to bring home a big check when I buy unless there's going to be, you know, some type of rehab involved. We protect our private lenders every way that we can. We don't borrow unsecured funds. They are they, here in North Carolina. It's a deed of trust. Most people call it a mortgage, but they are they get a deed of trust. They get the promissory note. They are named on the insurance policy as the mortgagee, just like a bank would be. The reason that's important is that if there's ever an insurance claim against a property, their name's on the check and they got to sign off on the check before we deposit it in our account. They're named on the title policy as additional insured. And so, you know, it, we take care of our private lenders and, you know, of our 47 private lenders, Sam, not one of them had ever heard of private money. They'd never heard of private lending. And so what did I do? I put on my teacher hat. I've taught them what private money is. I teach them my program. And then I'll tell them, I'll put your money to work for you just as soon as I can. If I need to introduce them to my self-directed IRA representative, I will if they're moving, you know, um, if they're moving funds over. So it's a win-win-win scenario and, and, and teaching people how this works. And, and by the way, side note, I don't care if you're raising money for syndication for commercial deal or single family, they always got more than they tell you. I like that. That's uh, that, that's pretty funny. That's real, real fun. How do you, because they, is there, well, let me see if I can find a, a thoughtful question here. You're doing this one deal at a time. That sounds really- Yeah, yeah we call them one-offs, one-offs. One-offs. Have you ever put together a pool of investors? Let's say that you had a deal that's called a $5 million deal. And you said, Hey, you know, there's going to be seven different investors who are going to dump all into this same opportunity. Has that ever happened? I've never done that. I got a lot of friends that do it all the time, every day and every week. And the funny thing is, is it's the same people. What do you mean by that? It's the same profile. It's the mm -hmm. same profile of, of lenders. However, there's one caveat to that. My minimum investment that I allow private lenders to come in is $50,000. Sure. However, when you're raising money for syndication, in a lot of cases, your minimum is going to be higher than that, right? So I've got a lot more private lenders that have, you know, well, I can't say that. I've got just as many private lenders that have over 100000 with me as I do between 50 and 100. But I tell you what's funny, most of the time, even when they want to start with 50, they're up to the 100 pretty quick. <laughs> right, right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Once they get used to how you function, kind of get their toe dipped in the water, figure out the process, it becomes more comfortable. And certainly that's uh, that's part of it. What? How do you handle it? I mean, because you don't necessarily know when the deals are going to hit. So I, what, I, what I have found in the capital raising side of our business is that if you don't, if, if you don't consistently have opportunity, that money has to go somewhere. And so people will deploy it. They're going to go, okay, hey, look, Jay, I'd love to give you a hundred grand, 200 grand on your next deal and be the solo investor, but it took you 45 days to get back to them. It's unlikely they're still sitting on that hundred grand burning a hole in their checking account 45 days later. How do you overcome that? It's been a juggling act ever since 2009. I've always, um, one, one good problem is I've always got money sitting on the shelf that's waiting to be used. But you bring up a very, very good point, Sam. You got to get that money deployed. A couple of tips that I've learned over the years. When I have a brand new private lender that says, hey, I've got X number of dollars to work with, um, you know, let's do a deal. I They go to the top of the queue. They go to the top of the list. I may have some other private lenders that I've paid off and their money is waiting to be used again. But if I got a new private lender, I want to for sure know, tell that private lender that I can put their money to work. In fact, what I've done sometimes, if I didn't have a deal just right around the corner, then I have used 
new private lender money to pay off an existing private lender and refinance that deal mm. just so I can get that new money working and start that relationship. Right. No, that's, that's it. And I know that's, it's probably cumbersome in the sense that there's a lot of paper that has to get traded in order to make that happen, but that's almost counterintuitive. And, and I, and I like the way you've, where you've, the way you, why you explained it that way. You know, for me, when I have new investors come in, to the brick and investor club i actually give priority to my existing investors you know the people that that, that put money in every single deal i mean I, i've i've even had i've even had the unfortunate conversation of having people sign up you know for an opportunity and saying hey i'm sorry we're full because my existing investors came back much stronger than i'd expected they say hey you know i'm sorry you know jay's invested with me in nine out of our last nine deals and he he gets the vip pass to, to the to the front of the line so i like the way you spun that the other way and said hey you know you want to get them in the fold and, and and getting used to you and kind of the process because that's uh right. it's well, and the good point. news is i mean typically i'm gonna be able to use everybody's money anyway again on another deal uh if they've just got if you know they've cashed out and you know they just got it sitting there waiting typically within 45 days anyway mm -hmm. and in my experience at least in the single family housing uh part of the business i've never had any problem even waiting you know 60 days for the money to go to work and the reason they don't mind, I mean, they want it to put to work right away, but the reason they don't mind is, you know, they're going to get a hair more than 1% in a 12 month CD today. And I'm going to give them 8%, right? <clears throat> so that they don't mind waiting a little bit. Now I'll tell you another thing, when I teach um, a new private lender about private lending and they're using retirement funds and I introduce them to my self-directed IRA representative and they move those funds over there, I am highly morally and ethically bound to put that money to work because they don't have anywhere else to go with it. Right. They, they moved that money over there based on my recommendation and they're looking for me to put it to work. Right. So. I, I, I'm really, really um, bound to get that money to work for them. Got it. And that makes that makes a lot of sense. I've certainly been in that situation as well. Uh, so where you help somebody get their self-directed IRA account set up, it is then incumbent upon you to make sure that that gets to work in a meaningful way and in a, in a, in a time, timely way. So certainly appreciate you coming on the show here today, Jay. This was lots of fun. Learned uh, quite a bit of things here from you just on how you approach it, how you find your lenders, good places to do that, how you can structure deals, the length, the terms, all of those things certainly been an insightful uh, episode for me. Jay, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was certainly a pleasure. I learned so much from you. It was a blast learning all about how you structure deals, how you find private money, the type of networking events that you go to. Just uh, just really a pleasure having you on the show today. If our listeners want to get in touch with you and learn more about you, what is the best way to do that? Absolutely, Sam. Actually, two ways. I've got my podcast, which is called Raising Private Money. I'll talk about that in a second. Secondly, I just fi um, recently finished writing my private money guide, which is called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Explode and Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. This will get your audience, your followers on the fast track to private money for your real estate deals. You can download it for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's jayconner.com forward slash money guide. And again, if you are on iTunes or Spotify or, you know, wherever you listen to your podcast, my podcast, the name of it is Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. I go to, uh, live and, and two episodes every week. I'd love for you to come check me out at Raising Private Money Podcast. Awesome. Jay, thank you again for your time today. I certainly appreciate it. Thank you, Sam, for having me. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big.